Is pineapple skin really indestructible? But more importantly, is it just the pineapple skin? Today we're going to play with fire to see if pineapple skin is really tough or if the internet exaggerated once again. Why do I do this? It's a fire test, not a bite test. There are several videos out there showing that the ski, that the pineapple skin today won't be easy. We'll show that pineapple skin is practically indestructible by fire. Some people even made clothes out of it, possibly to protect themselves from dragons. We decided to test this story and do something we've always wanted, a glowing metal ball. We bought a stainless steel ball last week that looked like a mirror. After some tests, it's now a rusty ball, despite stainless steel meaning rust proof. If we want a glowing ball to test on the pineapple, we need a forge. It shouldn't rust, right? Let's set this thing up. We set up a little forge here, pretty improvised, using a bit of fire brick, which is the one that goes in the fire, and regular brick around it. A steel pipe feeds the air. I'll break the charcoal to fit it in, as the whole piece is too large. If you have any tips on how to build little forges, let us know, because this is our first one, but I think we're gonna like this story. One of the biggest secrets of a forge, the difference between it and a regular oven, is that you have to pump oxygen in there so the fire has something to consume. So I'm using a heat blower here for now, but soon I'll try to use something stronger. Wow, is it already red hot? No, it's not red hot yet, not at all. I may have overdone it with the wind. The vacuum cleaner is 220 volts. We plugged it in to 110 to lower the power a bit. Look at this. It's better, it's better. Yeah, it didn't turn red. We need some forging experience, don't we? It's heating up, but burning through the coal too fast. I'll lower the air and go back to the heat blower as it was too intense. It's starting to turn red now. Ha 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 ha. It's very red. We're gonna do the first test. Look at this. You saw how easily it goes through cardboard, really easy. This is really satisfying. It was about to go through, but I simply lacked the patience to see it to completion. Behind the cameras, there's a debate about how long it would take for the ball to go through this styrofoam. I think it's gonna go through as if the styrofoam doesn't even exist. You guys, two seconds. We're split on whether it'll go through instantly or take a couple seconds. Let's see. My Brazil, shall we? Whoa, ha 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 ha. Ah, uh, I think that was pretty quick, huh? Should we try a bigger one? I won't even put the sphere back in the fire, okay? You think the pineapple can handle this? This one is asking for it, huh? It's already out of battery, just for the record. Wow. The shot likely didn't penetrate the screen, as the screen glass probably stopped it. This bottom part we had already burned in another video, actually. We went to have lunch in the middle of the recording, check it out. There's even a civil defense storm warning today. There wasn't much we could do, the rain got lighter, but we can't make an incandescent sphere in the mud. We had to move the forge, rebuild everything from scratch. The worst part is these bricks are still hot, so we have to be really careful. I think it's going to work. We've already tested this incandescent sphere a lot, so let's try it on the pineapple now. You saw that it pierces a lot of things without any trouble. Is the pineapple skin really all that tough? Wow, the ball must be right there, cracking. 
Now this here has, it's much better than before. Oh my God, that's why we wear leather clothes and stay away from this thing. It's much brighter than before, honestly. Look at its beauty. Really? Stop, 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 stop. Just to cause trouble, let's go. ball lost a bit of its incandescence it's not as bright anymore but it's still insanely hot and it did pretty much nothing to the pineapple i'll play something on top to show you it's still very hot see cardboard it burns through the cardboard instantly when I tried to film with the thermal camera, a warning popped up here. Burn protection, do not point the infrared camera directly at the fire source. Let's see if this will work. Look, the warning pops up. It can't record something this hot. The maximum it can register is 182 degrees Celsius here, but you can see smoke coming out from the top. Show me the temperature on the opposite side of the shell. There are videos out there that say it doesn't heat up at all on the other side, but from what I'm aiming at here, it's 71, 70 degrees Celsius on the other side. That's already a temperature where you can get burned. It's already pretty hot. You could maybe touch it quickly like this, but if it were clothing, you wouldn't be able to wear it and be safe on the other side. Yeah, but it's not that hot, really. And this is the damage it did in the front. It held the red hot ball really well. Everything looks nice, but I have a rather dull hypothesis about this pineapple. Everyone is saying that the pineapple is a super protection, that it's a shield, or whatever, but what I think is that this is happening simply because the pineapple's skin has a lot of water. And if that's really the case, it would work with the skin of any other fruit that was kind of thick and also had a lot of water. So to test my hypothesis, we're going to do the same thing with some other fruits and see what happens. Do you think the banana peel can handle it being much thinner than the pineapple peel? So, let's use three banana peels to make it about the same thickness as the pineapple peel. Isn't that beautiful? This year there will be a new category in Manual do Mundo, which is the two-stage polyethylene terephthalate bottle rocket. The object has lost its glow and is no longer incandescent. Let's remove it and examine what occurred. It was a little different from what I imagined. It didn't go through the banana peel, it held up, but it went in a little more than with the pineapple peel. What I think happened here is that the banana peel is less structured than the pineapple. It's softer. The banana started cooking, it turned into a mush of banana peel, and the ball managed to go in a bit more because everything got softer. The pineapple peel is harder. It looks like a fish scale. It's harder to soften even if you cook it. Still, it didn't work. Let's now test with passion fruit peel. And why would water make such a big difference? Isn't it much colder than iron? That's not exactly how it works. The red hot iron, as hot as it was, is extremely hot. I'm guessing here, at the very least, around 500 degrees. On the thermal camera, we can't see it simply because it can't register that temperature. Its range is limited. Water only reaches 500 digit 100 in vapor form as it evaporates at 100 degrees, 100. Boiling water will not reach 500 degrees Fahrenheit unless under very high pressure. You won't see incandescent water. But there's a detail in this story. Water has a much higher heat capacity than iron. In other words, if we had a little ball made of water that didn't evaporate, it would take much longer to heat up than this steel ball. And the opposite is also true. Water absorbs much more heat, which is why it's easy for us to cool things down with water. Uh, that means when I put a steel ball on top of something that has a lot of water, the water keeps absorbing the heat like crazy from the red hot ball. And I'll say more, out of the materials we know, water is one of those with the highest heat capacity of all. So it can store a lot of energy, or in our experiment here, it can absorb a lot of energy. It wasn't exactly cut in half, but thanks for the thumbs up. It's in the perfect shape to do the test. Malakuja peel, let's go. Oops. Ah, pineapple. I think you got left behind, huh? 
look, there's a little stain on the other side, but it didn't go through. It didn't even come close to going through. And let's go to the fruit that people like to test the most, right? Our dear watermelon. To ensure fairness, I'm removing this red part from the watermelon center to make its thickness similar to the pineapple. I can't let go, cause this rind ended up in a really bad shape. See, the ball comes out. See, I'll put it back. No offense, but I think we've taken this thrown away from the pineapple, huh? It's really smooth on the other side. Let's be honest, the pineapple skin is actually more structured. It holds up a bit more. It doesn't fall apart, but the other fruits can handle it too. And then, maybe you'll ask me, Hey, Ibray, wouldn't it be cool to make a fireproof suit out of fruit since they're so resistant to heat like that? Yeah, but at the same time, they rot, they're heavy. If we make a whole suit out of fruit, they're wet and they're gonna get a bit hot inside when the fire really hits. A thermal protective suit with fireproof fabric, like one shown on Manual Do Mundo, is much more efficient and easier to handle. I tried to set the watermelon here for support, but it goes right through. I disagree with what people are saying. I don't think it will hold up. Look at this. It's not gonna go down. I don't think it even fits because of its size. In short, all fruits are resistant to incandescent spheres. So if one day you get attacked by a legion of zombies shooting at you with a slingshot full of incandescent pellets, you can dress up in a cape made of watermelon, banana, pineapple, or passion fruit, and you'll be fine. We were about to turn off the forge, but then everyone started wondering, hey, can it pierce an aluminum can? Because if it pierces the aluminum, it means that this ball can reach over 660 degrees, since aluminum melts at 660 degrees. Wow, the brick is glowing. Look at that. I believe it will still pass through the bottom here. Look, look, look. Yeah, my friends, it easily goes over 660 degrees. To demonstrate water's thermal capacity, I have a small container here, about half the height of the ball, not filled to the brim. It's two liters of water, not much. I guess about 150 milliliters. Let's see how long the ball stays red here. And I thought it would go out faster. Water has a lot of thermal capacity, but iron also holds a lot of heat. 